I'm just going to jump right in here. We're going to be doing linear modeling this afternoon. And, you know, it's going to be a lot like the t-testing examples. Um, we're going to have um, formulas in R, and we're also going to see how we can investigate the output of this model um, and actually print it out uh, similar to our t-tests um, that we did. So investigate it with structure and pull out different components from our linear model that we actually want to save uh, down the line. Um, so by the end of this lecture, you'll be able to fit a linear model and graph the results. Um, yeah, but this, you know, if you use um, nonlinear models, so let's say you're doing logistic regression, uh, this will be similar. Uh, you'll be changing up functions a little bit. Um, but if you um, often you'll have maybe a control variable, for example, that you're interested in the t test of your marker, say, uh, against a drug response, but then you have some other control variables like sex and, and more, you'll want to use basically a linear model so that you can control um, those other aspects of your model in there. So uh, linear models are very important. I'm sure I don't have to convince you of that. Um, all right. So first, though, let's plot two markers against each other and see how um, they actually relate to each other. So here we're going to use a different R base R function um, that's just plot. OK, um, and so we're going to use these two commands or these three commands um, and we're going to be setting our pars. So we could do this. Um, we could just make a comma and have another argument to par. Um, or we can do it on separate lines. So I'm doing it on separate lines. And what this first line, we haven't seen this par before, this parameter for our graphing. This is mar. So this is setting the margins around our graph. And then par mf row, we recognize one by one, we want one row and one column of a plot. So that just means a single plot, okay? So here, we're going to specify the margin around the plot. So how small, like how tightly packed, or if it's spread out on your plotting pane. And then we specify, of course, the number of um, columns and rows in your plotting window. We just want one plot. Here, we're going to do a scatter plot. And this is our x variable we specify, and our y variable we're specifying here. And we are going to make a plot like so. One moment. OK. Now we know the number of rows and number of columns for MF row. But for par mar, so the margin around this plot, that is this margin. So up around here, around this side, around this side. So the margin, it includes um, pushing up the margin underneath your axis labels here. Um, we're going to specify that using par and then the mar argument. So the bottom margin is first, left, right, or top, and then right. Oh, sorry, I'm selecting zoom. There we go, right. So bottom, left, top, right. That's the order that these numbers represent. So you can experiment with this, actually. If you run these lines together, <clears throat> you can plot it one time um, with these all together and then experiment with this. See if your bottom margin is one, for example, how does that change your plot layout? Um, and if your bottom margin is 10, for example, then you can see how that changes it. And go ahead and click yes once you've created this plot. Pardon me, once you've created this plot, because it's a base R plot, you can use all those base R kind of parameters uh, to change aspects about this. So you can give it a title, you can change the X lab and the Y lab. So the labels on the axes, you know, if it's easy for you to get this plot going. Um, and then you can also do like a CEX dot LAB, right? The CEX lab, if you wanna change the label sizes, um, you can also change the color. So add call um, and then Put a color in. Um, we saw main earlier today if you want to change the title. So you can do lots to revise this plot and you can also play with your margins if you're able to get this plot going. And go ahead and click yes once you've got it.
and I'm going to be back in one minute. So I'm trying to add the uh, X lab and Y lab, but um, so I wrote it down, but it doesn't add it. And I'm not sure if maybe I did it not as part of the command or. Yeah, so just... and um, yeah, so you want to make it part of the command. So add a comma um, and do it within plot, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. within but the also... parentheses? Yes, exactly, within the parentheses, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, can we try something? Um, it's not counting the yeses now for me. I'm just going to. Um, oh, um, Rashad, you're, am you're I? Not, you're not the uh, host. Yeah. Rashad, do you mind making me a co-host? Yeah. And please, like me, I'm not always in front of my uh, computer. Sure. Thank you. Um, how come you are? OK. Yeah, it's weird. Perfect. That's great. Okay, good. Got it. All right. I thought it was thought this was really simple for you guys. And it was good. So you've got your plot up. Now let's update our points to be filled in circles and not black. And let's make our axis labels bigger and marker one and marker three, like you guys have already started to do. So we've done this before. Point color, you can just do call equals blue, easy, and choose any color you'd like. Point type. So this is, um, this would be on any of the um, cheat sheets for the base R um, graphing parameters, um, but each of these numbers, so see how I choose 19 here? This is the filled in big point. Um, each of these numbers is a different point type. So the default is one um, when you're using base R plot. Um, so you can choose any of these. Um, here, I'm making it 19, this filled in point here, um, but you can even choose, uh, you know, 22. That'll make it so it's a black outline um, and then the filled in color that you put. Um, actually, you might even be able to, if you choose um, these ones over here, you may be able to specify call and fill as another parameter um, and then have two colors on those points. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, but if you change call and you have the PCH is one, then it will just change the color of the outline versus here, 
If it's 19, it will change this entire color for you. All right. Um, there. So here uh, you can see it's filled in blue points. Um, and we know CEX lab, we know how to do that. And as Ran had pointed out, um, if you put these arguments outside of the plot command, then they're not going to run. You want it all inside the parentheses. And these separate arguments are going to be specified uh, with commas in between them. All right. So go ahead. Uh, go ahead and click yes once you've got it nice and revised for yourself. Some of you may also have to change um, the margins a little bit um, to make it fit. Awesome. I'll go back to these point types. So you can play with the different point types. One thing that's fun is, you know, um, in future, you could even change your point type um, to be variable based on your data. Um, so it could be like little triangles for some and squares for others, for example. Um, so point types are fun to use for that. All right, we got about half of the class is there. And if you get it, keep playing with it. Just keep trying things. Um, if, your ex, if your axis name isn't showing up, you need to add to the margin on that side. Um, so on the left side, that's the second number here. If you make this number bigger and run it, it'll push it over so you'll have more room. Um, so it might be being, getting cut off. This is a very, very common thing with base R plots. Um, that you know you're not you don't have the margins that you'd initially actually want. Wonderful. All right. I'm gonna give everyone a minute or two. Okay. Looks like we're getting it. Okay, so we've got our plot. It should look something like this. You know, maybe um, you chose a different color. Maybe you made your points even bigger, um, anything like that, but pretty close to this. And so here, the reason I'm having us do um, a plot first is because we're, our linear model is gonna create a line through this plot. And so when we plot our data first, we can actually you know, think about, do we see a correlation here? Is it positive? Is it negative? What do we expect our coefficient in our linear model to be? Okay, so from here, now we're gonna fit a linear regression of marker two versus marker three, okay? And the way we do that is just using the LM function. So we're gonna save the model output as an object. This means that R, when you run this command, it's just gonna run this command. It's gonna create this object in your environment and um, you're not gonna see anything else. If you wanna see the output to the linear model, remember you can, like while you're running this command, you could just put parentheses over the entire command um, and then print it that way. Um, our Y variable, so this is our outcome variable. So see, this is an R formula. We have our Y variable here and then our X variable here. If we had more variables, um, like let's say you wanna include now also a control for sex, like DF to sex, you can just add it with a plus sign. So just add on this side, um, so DF to dollar sign marker, and then plus DF to dollar sign sex, for example, um, but all within the parentheses, okay? So once you've created this linear model object, go ahead and click yes um, and, and investigate the output. See what you've got there. Um, you can also experiment with changing your linear model. You can um, add some controls in there, maybe for sight or sex um, or other things um, and just see what you get. That said, we will be using this specific linear model object down the line. So if you do change it, save it to a different object name.
wonderful. It looks like everyone's getting it. Wonderful. All right, we've got a few more people. Don't forget to click yes once you've got it. And if you're running into issues, feel free to take a little screenshot and put it up for us to look at. Because even if we're not dealing with that issue right now, I'm sure we'll all deal with it in the future. Um, these bugs are very common to us all. Yep, the output is just going to be this object saved. So it'll be in your environment pane, right? So here, this environment pane, once you have a linear model fit, so I'll just run it here, lin mod. In my global environment, I have lin mod and it's a list, just like my t test is a list. All the analyses, they're all going to create list outputs. Um, so if you did a generalized linear model, it would also be a list output, okay? So that's all you'll see. And once it's there, just click yes. Aha, so this is a tilde. So you don't wanna, you don't wanna dash, you wanna tilde in between. So formulas in R, they always need a tilde separating your Y variable from your X variables. All righty. Wonderful. Okay, so looks like we got it. Wonderful, Ren. Yeah. Make sure though you you save it. Oh yeah, no, that's a different object. Yeah. Um, added sex. Uh, because it's not DF. It's DF new. Um, so you're referencing the wrong data frame. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like we got it. Now let's work with this object. So if you do a summary on this output, so you can run summary lin mod, it will give you a lot of detail um, of your linear model. This is really useful. I actually really like the summary output of linear models um, and generalized linear models. So um, everything I'm saying for linear models goes the same if you're using, um, let's say you're doing a logistic regression, you have case control outcome. Um, that also is the same here, um, is very useful. Um, to use summary lin mod. So it's gonna give you the call. So it's gonna give you the formula that you ran um, just so you know, um, and note that it says formula. It's because this is an R formula. It's got an outcome, a tilde, and then some predictors, okay? Um, it gives you the residual distribution. This can help you know if the residuals are centered um, around the mean. So if they're normal residuals, right, uh, for, um, kind of diagnostics on your linear model. Then it gives you a really detailed overview of your coefficients. So the first one is the intercept. So this is your y-intercept um, and you'll get an estimate, your standard error of your estimate, the t-value, this is computed from these two, right? Um, and then per like, so it says probability that the absolute value of t is greater than the value given. This is the strict definition of a p-value, right? So the p-value is the probability that you will observe a greater absolute value of your t-statistic than what is given there. And so here, our p-value is uh, quite significant for our intercept. That's very common and not particularly of note. Um, but then what's really nice is our marker two, we see it has um, an estimate here uh, standard error t value and our p value is significant at the 0.05 level. So there's it's a lower probability than 5% that we would observe this randomly given that there's actually zero relationship between these two variables, right? So the hypothesis is that the estimate here is zero. Okay, so it's saying it is not zero. It seems that it's not zero. We would um, reject the null hypothesis that it's zero at 5%. Here, we have significant codes that help us along with that. So these stars, 
represent a certain level of significance. So if you get a point, it's significant at the 10% level. If you have nothing, it's not significant. Um, if you get a one star, it's significant at the 0.05 level. That's why we're seeing that star there. Similarly, two stars would be at the 0.01 level. Three stars is at the 0.001 level. Um, and that's what we see here. So we see um, a very significant um, intercept. Again, not really of note. Um, we also get other details down here about the total fit of the model. So down here, we have our residual standard error, um, fine. We also get our R square and our adjusted R square. So this is telling us how well, um, how much variance of our outcome, our marker three, is explained by our model. Not a lot. So it's we're not explaining marker three's variation that well with the variable uh, that we've included here. We have an F statistic for the whole model. So again, this is on the variance uh, that's being explained. Um, and the model, it is significant. So it, it's explaining more than zero variance, but it's not explaining much more, um, essentially, is what that's saying, OK? So this is all really useful information. Um, but we can also look at the structure of the summary. So just to go back here, here we took this, we created this object, LinMod, and we ran summary to get all of this output. But now let's use structure to see what components of summary are able to be extracted um, from this list. Because even though this is printed out nicely here, this is like a formatted output. Summary is a list that contains a lot of details that we can actually extract if we want to, for example, do what we did before with our t-test, where we extracted individual components and printed them to a table. So here, I'm making a kind of compounded uh, command here. So I'm looking now still at the summary of my linear model, but I use structure to even look deeper into it. So to see what's there and accessible. So I can pull out the formula and I can pull out the terms. That's fine. Um, but what I really like is here, I can use these. I can pull out my residuals and I can actually plot my residuals. So if I want to see how normal my residuals are, I can actually pull them out and explicitly test the normality of my residuals if I wanted. I can also extract individual coefficients, standard errors, and p-values. So this is very similar to what we did with t-tests, where we were pulling out the point estimates and everything. Here, we can pull out our coefficient and p-value if we wanted to. Um, so yeah, that's essentially that. So if you think about our loop before, where we were looping over our t-test and we were pulling out for each one of our t-tests, we were pulling out a specific um, component of our test. Here, maybe we wanna pull out the coefficient and the p-value for all of our markers versus some outcome of interest, okay? So now we have a linear model and we wanna add that line, this line of fit to our plot. So here's your plot from before what you can do is you can just take that linear model and you can put it into abline. So use abline. Remember from yesterday, this just draws a line on top of your um, on top of your data. And what abline has is a really nice uh, way of if you give it a linear model, it will take the intercept and the slope from your linear model, and it will use that to create a new line here. And so here I'm changing the line type to, to be dashed. So that's what LTY2 is doing there. You can also add LWD um, to change it, to make it thicker if you want, to change the line width. Um, whoops. Um, and yeah, this will go ahead and it will give you a line of fit over your data. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys add that line of fit and go ahead and click yes once you have it. One second, I'm just gonna add this guy on here. So add that line of fit on top. It should be a pretty quick command. And if you get it easy, try to change the color of the line, change the width, change the dashes. Um, just make it, uh, revise it, make it work for you. Great.
Awesome. So you can also, if you wanted to, you could add another ab line that's just a, a vertical or a horizontal line. So they just will keep adding on to your graph, okay? So you can just add, add, add uh, these ab lines. All right, looks like you guys have it. I'm gonna go ahead and clear and go on to the next. So now write a function that allows you to input two columns or two vectors um, and output the summary of the linear model of the first input column versus the second input column. So this one is uh, your first input is going to be your Y and your second input column is going to be your X. Okay. Oops. And then go ahead and click when you're done. And this is, if you have a very quick memory, you can see that. No, I've put these in the wrong order. And if you're able to get this quickly, if you're able to pull this out quickly, a challenge will be try to not put out the whole summary. Try to only output the coefficients of your linear model.
All right. And if you have it, keep trying to make it more complex. Um, so you can output only the coefficients now, not the whole uh, summary. You could also add a plot output to be printed at the same time the function runs, um, where you overlay the line of fit with your graph. Um, so these are all just things you can add on if you're, if you're able to get this function running right. To it here so that we don't get quite constant work. Let's do it. Okay, so for anyone who needs a hint here, so the function it's going to take two variables. So you define two variables. If you go back to the anatomy of a function, the arguments that you're defining in the parentheses you'll need two arguments, right? So to find two arguments, then within the curly brackets, run your linear model and output the summary. So just two lines. And remember, it will just show up under your functions. It's just going to be a new function in your environment. So it won't output anything, but you can test it by running um, it with marker one and marker two, for example, um, as your input. Um, so as your actual uh, vectors. Mm -hmm. It may need print around plot, Carmen. Um, or if you put the plot call above, ah, it's because you're plotting lin mod. Um, you want to plot the the x and y values um, there. So column one and column two. That's a that's another. You just defined the function. So just remember, you just define a function and then you have to run the function to see output from it. So you'll see the function up in your global environment under functions. So you should have a new function here that's named with the function that you gave it, the name that you gave your function. Um, and let's see, Diego, yep. All right, and don't forget to click yes if you got it. I think a lot of you have got it here. So we're not defining what the variants are? The no, inputs are? The inputs, so they just have to, you just have to give two variables 
that can be used okay, then. Yeah, as inputs um, here. Yeah, one sec, Between... column one, column two. Okay, I'm just picking at the, at the solution in the slides, but I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, here. So I'll just put the solution up since we're all, we're seeing it all around. Um, but here, see, you need to provide two variables. These are the two columns, right? So these variables are going to be used now in your function um, to do your linear model. But remember, this is, um, once this is defined, it will only show up as a function in your environment. Then you can use it to uh, actually put in, yeah. Once I define what the variant variables are yes, later exactly, on. Yes, exactly, exactly. Oh, so then just setting see, the ground for that's right, That's right. And so a function is totally general. You're just setting it up so that if you put in anything, you can run it and get the output that you want. So it's just taking some variables, pet, putting them through some procedure, and spitting out something else in a totally general way. And that's why these variables you define here, they're just for the function to use. Ah, and I found a typo. Oops. All right. So I'm going to keep keep going. If you're having trouble with it, keep going. Try to get it to work and then run a test line uh, with it and click yes once you've done it. Because I want to make sure you guys are getting these functions, the linear model, running things through these kinds of procedures. Because um, this is really key. And I'll go back. Awesome. So we've got it, some examples where people put in default variables, which is great. So then you can run it without actually specifying which variables these are. Let's see what we have here. So um, Ran, it looks like you're just running things inside the function. Um, uh, do you know what I mean? So you, no, so the function, this has to run all as one unit. Um, so I see just individual lines being run. Um, so it seems like it's oh. running like the, yeah. Why? Uh, probably yeah. cursors like on one of these okay. intermediate lines. Yeah. Okay, now it's fine. Okay. I just selected all of it. Yes, yeah. So that's one way. Or if you're on the outside here, um, you can just use it, uh, just have your cursor on the top line, for example. Oh, too. the top line. So I wasn't. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, because the thing is in between uh, the curly brackets, and this goes for loops too, in between the curly brackets, R is going to read this as a single line of code. But if you're up around uh, a function level, then it's going to say, oh, it's a function. Okay, I'm going to run everything, this line and all the curly brackets. Same for a loop. If you're at the for loop level, the very top level, it's going to say, oh, this is a loop. And it's going to run everything that's in those curly brackets. But if you're inside the curly brackets, it doesn't know. It will just say, oh, like it's just this one line of code. I don't recognize any of these variables. I don't know what you're doing. And, and it'll give you an error. Yeah. OK, thanks. So now yeah. we can define var1 and var2 if you want. Exactly. And you can run in and get your output. I see. OK. Yeah. And even better, 
you can run it in a loop. So if you have many, many markers that you want to test and you have them all being run with a specific coefficient that you care about, um, but other controls that you include in your model, you can add those on. So I'm just going to edit it actually here um, because this is the last piece before we take a short break, a very short break, and then go on to markdown.